All right, Kleptonian Legion, here we go. We have a special video for you today. We're going to be doing power leveling. So we're going to cover the ins, the outs, and everything you need to know about how to be power leveled, as well as how to power level somebody. So I have my character here all set up. We've skipped the campaign. We're about to start. Name's in. Got a nice fresh look, some sweet tattoos. We're going to go into the Seasonal Realm, and then we're going to go into Tier 2. Power leveling uh, is just basically taking your level 1 character and getting him to tier 4 as fast as possible. Uh, why do we do this? You gain XP bonuses for each tier. So we're going to head on over to Kovashad. We're going to see if there's somebody willing to power level you. This is not a requirement by anybody, but there are a lot of people that do enjoy running people through, helping people out. So feel free to ask if there's anybody that's willing to power level you. If no one responds, hop on into some leveling uh, by yourself, and then uh, wait until you see a group forming. Uh, we also do events here uh, every week for power leveling, so if you want to hop into one of those, plan your character around it. Here is the reason that we're doing this. You gain 20% increased experience from monsters in Tier 2. We skip to Tier 3 you gain 100% increased monster. Tier four, 200% increased experience. The person that is willing to help you, you are in tier two, they're in tier four most of the time. So if you go ahead and invite this person, we're gonna take epileptic T with me. They will join your party, which automatically brings them down to tier two with you is we're going to head right to the first capstone dungeon, which is in Kyovashat. So you go here, and then you come straight up to this. This is your first capstone dungeon, the Cathedral of Light. We're going to go inside, and then the magic happens. We just stand there. So while you're going through these dungeons here, you do not need to worry about gear. In the first capstone dungeon, when you get to the second phase, there's a kill all section. In that kill all section, once they get down to almost all of them dead, monsters are actually going to spawn on you in the back. So it's going to be your job to pay attention to where the power leveler is. And you'll see them get into the first boss room. Once that boss room is killed, and I'll show you on the map once he gets there, you're actually going to zone out of the dungeon, and then you're going to teleport right to your power leveler. If you die, that is perfectly fine. You can take a res once all the monsters are dead. It is going to be your job, basically, to make sure that these runs go as smoothly as possible for the people that are power leveling you. Um, it can be kind of stressful sometimes to try and keep lower levels alive because you have a very big aggro radius. Um, so it's your job to stay safe, which is why I'm standing right here at the beginning of the dungeon. If the person that's leveling you has to constantly run backwards to try and revive you, then it slows down your run, it slows down your experience. He's going to go into the boss room. Those bosses should die pretty quick. We'll have time to teleport to town, because it'll take us right to Kyovashad, right to the portals. And then we're going to click on his portal and go back inside. He's about to enter the boss room. So this is a good time for me to start teleporting, because he's going to kill those bosses real quick. So now that we're here, We've gone back, we're going to take the teleporter right back to him. If you look on your mini-map, this is what the portal looks like right here. So you can see that he's gotten to the portal, and you can also see where the other portal is, so that you'll know when it is to teleport back out. This will save him time, because if you were to stand all the way back here, as soon as he gets through all of these monsters in here, they would all spawn all the way back here. Now for Capstone 1, I'm sure I probably said this already, but we're just going to repeat it. You do not need any gear. None of this gear is going to be used. The whole point of power leveling is to get you to Ancestral gear as fast as possible. Uh, that's level 60. Sacred gear is level 45. Alright, that was it. Now we're going to go head over there. Hugo is making an appearance in the video. Okay, we're here. Get on our nice plain bland horse 
head over to the statue. And now you got to wait just a couple seconds because this one takes a little while for it to load. And now that it's loaded, we go to Nightmare. Confirm. Abby's going to go now to Capstone right here. And then once you see him zone in, then we are going to um, teleport to him. And then we start Capstone 2. Now, Capstone 2 is even easier than Capstone 1 because you don't have to worry about teleporting. All you do is you just stand at the front, in the front of the dungeon. So we're going to go teleport to him now on our sweet horse. Cosmetics is how you win. Okay, and now the excitement starts. You stand here. So just like Capstone 1, even though this is sacred gear, you don't need any of the gear from here. Uh, Epi is just going to run basically straight through. So if you want to power level somebody, um, you don't have to be level 100. You don't have to have Ubers. You don't have to have max gear. Uh, the way that experience works in this game is that you gain max experience from enemies, the monsters that are 10 levels or higher. So doing a tier 1, if you're level 1, and you're doing a tier 20 dungeon or a tier 100 dungeon, it gives you the exact same amount. So if you're a level 75 barbarian, and you can clear level 50 nightmare dungeons as fast as you possibly can, you're going to get that person that wants to be power leveled the most XP that they can get possible. If somebody needs some help and you have some time, you could just hop in with them, pull them into your party, run whatever level dungeon you feel comfortable running. Now all we're going to do is we're going to teleport right back to Kyovishat. We don't need to go pick up any gear. Any legendaries that have dropped are going to just go right to our inbox. And then we go to tier 4. Oops. Epi said no. We made it to world tier 4 now. So now, nightmare dungeons start. We can do vaults, regular old nightmare dungeons. And we're going to come in here and we're going to either go to take some elixirs. And use those because that gives us an extra 5%. Or you're going to go to your alchemist. Uh, do our quest, and then if you need to, you can create elixirs. You scroll down to the very bottom, you can make a whole bunch of them. Uh, they all give 5% XP. Once you start getting a little higher, uh, you are able to craft incense, level 45. They're very expensive, and they only last for 20 minutes, so if you are short on materials, this is probably not a very cost-effective way. The way that Nightmare Dungeons work is you take the Nightmare Dungeon, level plus 54. So a level 1 dungeon is level 55 monsters. You only need level 25 monsters to get max XP. Alright, so dungeon pops. I don't have vaults activated, which is what Epi did, because um, I haven't done my seasonal quest yet, but that's okay. Because as soon as Epi disappears and goes into the vault, which you'll see this go gray, and you'll see his little dot disappear, all you have to do is just go to the portal, and then you can teleport to him when it says it's available. If you're teleporting on somebody, this is a pro tip here, if you do not move, don't touch your keyboard, don't touch your controllers, nothing at all. See how I'm not dying whatsoever? A whole bunch of stuff just went off, fire explosion went off. I did not die because I did not move. So if you're teleporting to somebody that's power leveling you, do not move until you know that it's safe. Well, now what we're going to do in these Nightmare Dungeons is that I'm pretty close. I'm actually way too close to Epi right now, but that's only because I just teleported in here. So we're going to watch Epi's little dot on the map there, and we're going to stay very far away. Like I said in the Capstone Dungeon, we don't need to be right next to them to get max XP. So we're going to watch, and we're going to see Epi. Epi's going to do his, his best to clear all of the monsters that are in there so that you can move forward but the most important thing if you can see right here is the xp the gear will come so we're staying safe we're letting epi go and through and clear uh, once he's moved on to a zone pretty far ahead we should be safe to move up just a little bit 
Now, if you're worried and you don't want to die and you want to just get the most XP out of it, you just stay right at the very beginning of the dungeon. Give him some time once he goes into this portal here, because a lot of times when you zone into these vault portals, right on the other side there, um, where Epi is, there should be um, a whole bunch of monsters just sitting there waiting. As you can see, I am level leveling up like crazy here. So I got my elixir on for my extra 5%. I'm in tier 4. We're getting max XP bonus because the monsters are more than 10 levels higher than we are. Occasionally, monsters are going to pop out of the ground. The person power leveling, you won't be able to get everything. So right there, some monsters just popped right out of the ground because I ran into an area that looked explored, but may not have been. So I ran down a nook and cranny. I didn't stay to the main path. I'm not going to take a revive. Epi saw that I'm dead. There's only four revives. So he's going to come back and get me up. And a couple things that you do not want to do in here, and I haven't ran into any yet. Um, night, regular Nightmare Dungeons are more prone to this than the vaults are. But you do not want to run to an area that's unexplored. So if I ran over here, even to here, there might be something lurking around the corner over here that I don't want to go. So anything that is blacked out, stay away from. I don't want to open any doors. And I don't want to open any chests. All of them have chances of monsters coming out of. This is the benefit of having a giant clan and having a bunch of active people that are willing to help. And It is always great to get power leveled and to help get help, but also remember to pay it forward. If you've been power leveled by somebody in the clan and you get to a good spot where you can clear the capstone dungeons and you see somebody asking for a power level, hop in. You don't have to continue after you finish the capstone dungeons. If people want to just run capstone and then go back to farming Helltides or running their Varshan or whatever they were doing, or if they're trying to push higher tiers but they can't do it with people in the party, that's perfectly fine. They're not obligated to push anywhere past capstone. But if that's what they're planning on doing and the person that's power leveling you is okay with it, then you could stick around with them. See how I'm staying several rooms away from Epi? Like that's how you want to make sure that you're power leveling. If I was to run in here and we head all the way around and now Epi's in this next room here, this is way too close. You do not want to be this close. I could already see some of the monsters. I could be aggroing stuff. Even though he's in here, I could still die. So I want to make sure that I'm not running ahead of him. I'm not going over here where he hasn't explored yet because then I could die. That's going to lose my experience points, and if you have people with you, now you have monsters running at you. When they kill you, who do they go for? The other people in the party. See how far away he is, and I'm still getting that XP bonus for being close. He's a full two rooms away, and I have that XP bonus. So, back up. Just kidding. Stay back. Please. If you're running a group, uh, Nightmare Dungeons have different affixes. affixes. This one here has killing monsters enrages them. But let's say this is something like uh, Stormbane's Wrath. Uh, the big gigantic rock that follows you around. If somebody's not paying attention and dies, get that rock away from their body. You do the res. Don't let the person that's power leveling you come back. And then because Epi is power leveling us, now that we've invited him and we're in tier 4, we're going to make him party leader. So this way, when he completes a dungeon, the bubble spawns on him and not on me. So remember, these people are taking the time out of their day to help you out, get you some glyph XP, get you some XP. Uh, make sure that you make it as easy as possible for them. Have fun. Be thankful for it. If you die a couple times, it happens. Don't worry about it. We all die, especially being power leveled. Um, but they remember, they're doing their best to try and keep it so that you stay alive you get the most xp out of the run you can uh, but that's it thank you everybody let's get some power leveling done thank you for being a part of the clan we all appreciate you